mean, I always thought they were great art. But when I came to New York, I found out that people were throwing them away. I used to rescue cartoons out of waste baskets. They used to put them out on, on the tables and let people just take them, just to get rid of them, because they, they just cluttered up their storage rooms. Mort Walker is in the paper every day, yet most people don't know his story. He's the author of the comic strip Beetle Bailey and has fought since the 1940s to create a national cartoon museum, a shrine to the medium he's devoted his life to. You know, they sell these things for an awful lot of money. And uh, we never really got into selling them. Just, just collecting. It's the largest cartoon treasure trove of its kind in the world and is estimated to be worth over $20 million. Since 1974, the collection has moved four times. It has been sitting here in a storage facility in Stamford, Connecticut since 2002. The walkers are now packing the tunes up and shipping them to Ohio State University. The museum's collection will there join forces with the university's library and eventually will be available for public view. They take these comic strip characters, or the, or the animated characters, and they become so fond of them that they're like friends. And well, recently I had a thing with Beetle Bailey. <clears throat> I had all the guys getting mail at mail call, except Sarge didn't get anything. They said, Sarge, poor Sarge, you didn't get any mail. Sarge, oh, who wants mail? You got hell of mail. Well, I don't want any mail. And he goes back in the, in the barracks, and the big tear comes down of his eyes. I got letters from kids all over the country saying, Sarge, don't cry. Here's a letter for you. Hope it makes you happy. <laughs> Through the decades, the museum has struggled to maintain funding, but Mr. Walker has stayed behind the cause tirelessly. Well, it's interesting. You know, somebody said, why, why do you have to have a museum? I've already seen your cartoon in the paper. I said, have you ever seen a picture of the Mona Lisa? Why would you ever go to the Louvre? I think that people get a kick out of seeing the cartoons because oftentimes they laugh again or uh, they relate to it almost like a person. The line between Mr. Walker's comics and his life is blurred. His home is a monument to cartoons. From here, he continues to draw six strips and a Sunday spread every week of Beetle Bailey. The strip, which he now co-bylines with his oldest son, Greg, is in its 58th year of continuous publication. I guess cartoons are something that you read and throw away. Uh, sometimes people clip them out and put them on the cash register or the bulletin board or something like that. And I've always said, I don't care about the Pulitzer Prize, I want the bulletin board prize. <laughs> That's where it really matters. With the museum moving and his 85th birthday approaching, some might wonder if Mr. Walker has any desire to slow down. And then I have another 100,000 uh, of the written ideas that I, I didn't sketch up. I got a lot left over. A real gold mine. <laughs> or a laugh mine, you might say. This is Mary Pallon with the Wall Street Journal.